This video is going to be focusing on a key skill that we need for IGCSE chemistry, and that is how we write out ionic equations. So when we're looking at any type of chemical reaction, we can write out a number of different equations. We can look at a word equation, for example, sodium hydroxide plus nitric acid, giving us sodium, hydro sodium nitrate and water. We can look at a balanced chemical equation where we show out the chemical formulas and the state symbols and make sure to balance up our number of atoms. Or we can convert to an ionic equation that shows only the ions that are taking part in the reaction. So this is the part that we want to focus on here and we want to figure out how do we go from this chemical equation to this ionic equation. And there is a key phrase that you have to know and it is the words spectator ion. Now a spectator ion is an ion that appears identical on both sides of the arrow. So for example, if we had Na plus on one side of the arrow and on the same side, it has not actually changed in our equation. Therefore, it is not taking part in the reaction. It is simply spectating or watching the reaction. And we're not really interested in those and so we tend to remove them from our ionic equation. But we're going to do some examples to show how we can identify spectator ions and how we actually get our ionic equation. So our first example is a neutralization reaction between potassium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. So the first part that we're going to do is we're going to write out our word equation. So we have potassium hydroxide reacting with sulfuric acid and hopefully you know in this neutralization reaction of course we're going to make a salt which is potassium sulfate and we're also going to make water. So now we want to convert this into our chemical equation. So potassium hydroxide has the formula KOH and it has the state symbol of aqueous. Sulfuric acid is h 2 SO4, it also has the state symbol of aqueous. All of our acids and alkalis will always be aqueous. We can have our salt, which when you do your valency rules, works out to be K2SO4, which is aqueous. And then water, of course, is H2O. And water's state symbol is always liquid. Now, when we're trying to write out our ionic equation, we want to focus on everything that has the state symbol of aqueous. The reason that we want to focus on these is what actually happens with these substances is we get a dissociation of the ions. Now this just means that when they go into water, they are free to move around. So they are not stuck to each other the way they would be if they were in a solid. And we can take that into account by looking at our aqueous substances and splitting them into the ions that are present. And we can then determine what is a spectator ion. So what we do is we take each chemical at a time and we look to see, first of all, is it aqueous? And if it is, what ions are present? So let's start with potassium hydroxide. Well, yes, it is aqueous. So we're going to split it down and we're going to split it into a potassium ion, which is K plus, plus a hydroxide. Now, before we can fully do this, we have to make sure that we've balanced our equation. Now, of course, hopefully you've worked out that the equation is not balanced. I have to put a two in front of the KOH and I have to put a two in front of the water. Now, when we're doing that and we then go to our ionic equation, we need to take into account this coefficient. So what I actually have is I have two potassium ions and two hydroxide ions because I have two molecules of KOH. When I then go to sulfuric acid, well, I split it into two parts. I have a hydrogen ion and I have a sulfate ion. Now, because the, the formula is H2, that tells me that I have two hydrogen ions and I have one sulfate ion, which is SO4, 2 minus. I then look at potassium sulfate. Again, it is aqueous, so I can split this down. Well, what do I have? Well, I have potassium ions and it's K2, so that tells me that I have two of them. I still have my sulfate ion, SO4, 2 minus. And then I come to the water. Now, the water has a state symbol of L. It is a liquid. Therefore, it does not dissociate in this equation. So we simply write it exactly 
as it is. Now looking at this, we can look to see well, what is the same on both sides of the equation. And hopefully you can see that the potassium is identical and the sulfate is identical. Those are our spectator ions. So what we'd want to do is we want to remove them and then we write what is left over. So that would be our hydroxide, our hydrogen and our water. So our ionic equation here is going to be two hydroxides plus two hydrogens giving us two waters. Let's look at a second example. So now we want to look at how we can um, form an alkali. So the reaction that we're looking at is how to dissolve sodium carbonate in water and we make two substances. So let's start with our word equation. We have sodium carbonate plus water will give us an alkali of sodium hydroxide plus sodium hydrogen carbonate. So now we want to convert that into a chemical equation. So sodium carbonate, you would be able to do your valency rule and you would determine that it has got the formula Na2CO3 and it is an aqueous substance. We also have water, which is our H2O, as we've said. We know that sodium hydroxide is going to be NaOH. And that leaves us with the sodium hydrogen carbonate. And it's actually made up of two ions, which are the sodium ion and the hydrogen carbonate, which is HCO3. Now, it's most likely in a, a GCSE question, you would be told the formula of that or you would be told the ions that are present. So now we want to look at our chemical equation again. So before we do that, let's just check that everything is balanced. So I have two sodiums on both sides. I have two hydrogens, one carbonate and one carbonate and two, um, one oxygen. So everything is balanced. So let's spl split down into our ions. So I have two sodium ions. I have one carbonate ion, which is CO3 two minus. And then water, we've said we don't touch. Notice that I'm trying to align all of my arrows just to make it a little bit easier for you when you're trying to figure out what is on each side. So then I look at the other two. Well, the other two things are both um, are both sorry are both aqueous. So we're going to be able to split that down. So again, we have Na plus and our hydroxide. And for the sodium hydrogen carbonate, we have sodium. And then, as I've said, the iron is hydrogen carbonate. So we can identify well, what appears on both sides. Well, in this case, the only spectator iron that we have is the sodium. So we remove that and we just simply rewrite everything that is left. So we have CO3 2 minus plus water gives us a hydroxide ion plus the hydrogen carbonate ion. Example three is looking at a group seven displacement reaction. So we are reacting potassium bromide with chlorine and we know that in terms of the halogens chlorine is more reactive than bromine therefore it is going to take its place in the compound so we're going to make potassium chloride plus bromine now let's put that into a chemical equation where potassium bromide has the symbol kbr Chlorine, remember, is diatomic. We have to remember our rule. And, of course, chlorine is a gas. We're going to make potassium chloride, which
which is KCL, and that is aqueous. And our bromine is also diatomic, so it is Br2. And remember, bromine is one of two liquids on the periodic table. <clears throat> so you can see that there are only two substances here that we're going to be able to split down into our ions, and that's our KBr and our KCl. So let's just check, is everything balanced? Well, no, it's not. If I start with two chlorines, I need to end with two chlorines. So I have to put a two here. And then if I start with two potassium, uh, finish with two potassium, sorry, I have to start with them. And let's just check two bromines, two bromines. So now we are balanced. So if I take my ionic substance, I have potassium bromide. So that is made up of two potassium ions and two bromide ions. I don't touch the chlorine because the chlorine is not uh, aqueous, it is a gas, so we just leave it. Then I have two potassiums and two chlorides in our potassium chloride, plus bromine with it being a liquid. Again, we don't touch that in terms of its um, making it into an ion. It does not exist in, when we break it down. So my spectator ions, in this case, I have, again, I have one, which is potassium, so I remove them, and that gives me an ionic equation of two bromides plus chlorine gas will react to form two chlorides plus bromine liquid. So example four is going to be looking this time at a redox displacement reaction. So we're thinking about the reactivity series. And don't worry if you haven't covered the reactivity series yet. It is very much the same as a displacement reaction in group seven. So we're looking at the reaction between zinc plus copper to sulfate. Now in the reactivity series, zinc is higher than copper therefore the zinc is going to want to take the copper's place and it will displace it so we are going to form zinc to sulfate plus copper metal so let's have a look at how we write that out well our zinc is a metal so it is a solid we have copper to sulfate if you do your valency rules you will get CuSO4 which is aqueous. For zinc sulfate, again, it is zinc 2, so we can do our valency rules and we get ZnSO4 aqueous plus copper metal, which is CuS. Now, we can even split this down into its redox equation, so its reduction and its oxidation, but we're not going to go into that in this video. That will be covered in a, a, another video on the channel. Let's focus on just making it into an ionic equation. So we know that we can't change the zinc because it is a solid. Now we look at the aqueous copper sulfate. Well, what's going to be in that? Well, we're going to have copper ions, which is Cu2+, plus, and sulfate ions, which are SO4, 2 minus. Then we look at the zinc sulfate. Well, the zinc, in this case, is a 2 plus ion. We have our SO4 2 minus, and we have our copper metal. So hopefully you can see that our spectator ion here is the sulfate. It does not change on both sides, so it is removed from the equation. And we rewrite the things that are reacting. So we have zinc metal plus copper ions are going to react to give us zinc ions and copper metal. Let's look at one more example, and this is a precipitation reaction. So you'll see this reaction when you um, cover chemical tests, if you haven't already, and it is the test for a halide ion where we use silver nitrate. Now we've given you all of the information in the sentence, so it's just picking out the key information. So we are reacting silver nitrate plus sodium chloride 
and we're going to form a precipitate. So a precipitate is another word for a solid. So we're going to form solid silver chloride and sodium nitrate solution. Now it's been specifically written like that to help you with your state symbols. So this precipitation reaction or any precipitation reaction, when you take two solutions and you form an insoluble solid. So our silver nitrate is AgNO3, which is aqueous. Our sodium chloride, hopefully we know, is NaCl. Now we're going to form our silver chloride. So we can do our valency rule. Silver will always be an Ag plus ion. So it's got a valency of 1. Chloride has a valency of 1. So we end up with AgCl. But because it is a precipitate, we have a state symbol of solid. And then we also make sodium nitrate solution. Let's just look, are we balanced here? Yes, we have one silver on each side. We have one nitrate on each side, one sodium on each side, and one chloride on each side. So I want to split it down. What I have got Ag plus aqueous reacting with NO3 minus aqueous plus Na plus aqueous plus chloride aqueous. This time we're going to be reacting that with AgCl. Sorry, we're going to be making AgCl and that's a solid so it does not break down. And we're going to have Na plus and NO3 minus. These are both aqueous so they can be split down. So hopefully you can see that we have sodium and sodium or the nitrate and the nitrate. So we remove them from our equation and we're left with silver ions reacting with chloride ions to make a precipitate of silver chloride. So that's all the examples that we have for our ionic equations. You can see that there are now some practice questions if you want to have a go at them. There are various different types of reactions and where necessary it's told you any state symbols and you should be able to work out what is formed to write out the word equation, convert that to a chemical equation, balance it and then write your ionic equation. Now in an exam it's unlikely you're going to be asked to do all of them, you're probably only going to be asked to do specific ones. So it might be just going from a chemical equation to an ionic but make sure that you can go from the word to the chemical to being balanced and then to the ionic, focusing only on the ones that have a state symbol of AQ. So hopefully you're successful in those questions. If you have any questions about the content or how to do any of the, the practice, please leave a comment below. Hopefully we'll see you back on the channel soon and Thank you very much for watching.